chapters twenty one through twenty five of the first book of samuel from the young's literal translation of the bible translated by robert young this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by mark penfold chapter twenty one and david cometh into nob unto ahimelech the priest and ahimelech trembleth at meeting david and saith to him wherefore art thou thyself alone and no man with thee and david saith to ahimelech the priest the king hath commanded me a matter and he saith unto me let no man know anything of the matter about which i am sending thee and which i have commanded thee and the young men i have caused to know at such and such a place and now what is there under thy hand five loaves give into my hand or that which is found and the priest answereth david and saith there is no common bread under my hand but there is holy bread if the youths have been kept only from women and david answereth the priest and saith to him surely if women have been restrained from us as heretofore in my going out then the vessels of the young men are holy and it is a common way and also surely to-day it is sanctified in the vessel and the priest giveth to him the holy thing for there was no bread there except the bread of the presence which is turned aside from the presence of jehovah to put hot bread in the day of its being taken away and there is a man of the servants of saul on that day detained before jehovah and his name is doeg the edomite chief of the shepherds whom saul hath and david saith to ahimelech and is there not here under thy hand spear or sword for neither my sword nor my vessels have i taken in my hand for the matter of the king was urgent and the priest saith the sword of goliath the philistine whom thou didst smite in the valley of elah lo it is wrapped in a garment behind the ephod if it thou dost take to thyself take for there is none other save it in this place and david saith there is none like it give it to me and david riseth and fleeth on that day from the face of saul and cometh in unto achish king of gath and the servants of achish say unto him is this not david king of the land is it not of this one they sing in dances saying saul smote among his thousands and david among his myriads and david layeth these words in his heart and is exceedingly afraid of the face of achish king of gath and changeth his behaviour before their eyes and feigneth himself mad in their hand and scribbleth on the doors of the gate and letteth down his spittle unto his beard and achish saith unto his servants lo ye see a man acting as a madman why do ye bring him in unto me a lack of madmen have i that ye have brought in this one to act as a madman by me doth this one come in unto my house chapter twenty two and david goeth thence and is escaped unto the cave of adullam and his brethren here and all the house of his father and go down unto him thither and gather themselves unto him to every man in distress and every man who hath an exactor and every man bitter in soul and he is over them for head and there are with him about four hundred men and david goeth thence to mizpah of moab and saith unto the king of moab let i pray thee my father and my mother go out with you till that i know what god doth for me and he leadeth them before the king of moab and they dwell with him all the days of david's being in the fortress and gad the prophet saith unto david thou dost not abide in a fortress go and thou hast entered for thee the land of judah and david goeth and entereth the forest of hareth and saul heareth that david hath become known and the men who are with him and saul is abiding in gibeah under the grove in ramah and his spear is in his hand and all his servants standing by him and saul saith to his servants who are standing by him here i pray you ye benjamites also to all of you doth the son of jesse give fields and vineyards all of you he doth appoint heads of thousands and heads of hundreds for ye have conspired all of you against me and there is none uncovering mine ear about my son's covenanting with the son of jesse and there is none of you grieving for me and uncovering mine ear 
that my son hath raised up my servant against me to lie in wait as at this day and answer doth doeg the edomite who is set over the servants of saul and saith <laughs> i have seen the son of jesse coming into nob unto ahimelech son of ahitab and he asketh for him at jehovah and provision hath given to him and the sword of goliath the philistine hath given to him and the king sendeth to call ahimelech son of ahitab the priest and all the house of his father the priests who are in nob and they come all of them unto the king and saul saith here i pray thee son of ahitab and he saith here am i my lord and saul saith unto him why have ye conspired against me thou and the son of jesse by thy giving to him bread and a sword and to ask for him at god to rise against me to lie in wait as at this day and ahimelech answereth the king and saith and who among all thy servants is as david faithful and son-in-law of the king and hath turned aside unto thy counsel and is honoured in thy house to-day have i begun to ask for him at god far be it from me let not the king lay anything against his servant against any of the house of my father for thy servant hath known nothing of all this less or more and the king saith thou dost surely die ahimelech thou and all the house of thy father and the king saith to runners those standing by him turn round and put to death the priests of jehovah because their hand also is with david and because they have known that he is fleeing and have not uncovered mine ear and the servants of the king have not been willing to put forth their hand to come against the priests of jehovah and the king saith to doeg turn round thou and come against the priests and doeg the edomite turneth round and cometh himself against the priests and putteth to death in that day eighty and five men bearing a linen ephod and nob the city of the priests he hath smitten by the mouth of the sword from man even unto woman from infant even unto suckling and ox and ass and sheep by the mouth of the sword and there escapeth one son of ahimelech son of ahitab and his name is abiathar and he fleeth after david and abiathar declareth to david that saul hath slain the priests of jehovah and david saith to abiathar i have known on that day when doeg the edomite is there that he doth certainly declare it to saul i have brought it round to every person of the house of thy father dwell with me fear not for he who seeketh my life seeketh thy life for a charge art thou with me chapter twenty three and they declare to david saying lo the philistines are fighting against gila and they are spoiling the threshing floors and david asketh at jehovah saying do i go and have i smitten among these philistines and jehovah saith unto david go and thou hast smitten among the philistines and saved keilah and david's men say unto him lo we here in judah are afraid and how much more when we go to keilah unto the ranks of the philistines and david addeth again to ask at jehovah and jehovah answereth him and saith rise go down to keilah for i am giving the philistines into thy hand and david goeth and his men to keilah and fighteth with the philistines and leadeth away their cattle and smiteth among them a great smiting and david saveth the inhabitants of keilah and it cometh to pass in the fleeing of abiathar son of ahimelech unto david to keilah an ephod came down in his hand and it is declared to saul that david hath come in to keilah and saul saith god hath made him known for my hand for he hath been shut in to enter into a city of doors and bar and saul summoneth the whole of the people to battle to go down to keilah to lay siege unto david and unto his men and david knoweth that against him saul is devising the evil and saith unto abiathar the priest bring nigh the ephod 
and david saith jehovah god of israel thy servant hath certainly heard that saul is seeking to come in unto keila to destroy the city on mine account do the possessors of keila shut me up into his hand doth saul come down as thy servant hath heard jehovah god of israel declare i pray thee to thy servant and jehovah saith he doth come down and david saith do the possessors of keila shut me up and my men into the hand of saul and jehovah saith they shut thee up and david riseth and his men about six hundred men and they go out from keila and go up and down where they go up and down and to saul it hath been declared that david hath escaped from keila and he ceaseth to go out and david abideth in the wilderness in fortresses and abideth in the hill country in the wilderness of ziph and saul seeketh him all the days and god hath not given him into his hand and david seeth that saul hath come out to seek his life and david is in the wilderness of ziph in a forest and jonathan son of saul riseth and goeth unto david to the forest and strengtheneth his hand in god and saith unto him fear not for the hand of saul my father doth not find thee and thou dost reign over israel and i am to thee for second and also so knoweth saul my father and they make a covenant both of them before jehovah and david abideth in the forest and jonathan hath gone to his house and the ziphites go up unto saul to gibeah saying is not david hiding himself with us in fortresses in the forest in the height of hakila which is on the south of the desolate place and now by all the desire of thy soul o king to come down come down and ours is to shut him up into the hand of the king and saul saith blessed are ye of jehovah for ye have pity on me go i pray you prepare yet and know and see his place where his foot is who hath seen him there for one hath said unto me he is very subtle and see and know of all the hiding places where he hideth himself and ye have turned back unto me prepared and i have gone with you and it hath been if he is in the land that i have searched him out through all the thousands of judah and they rise and go to ziph before saul and david and his men are in the wilderness of maon in the plain at the south of the desolate place and saul and his men go to seek and they declare to david and he goeth down the rock and abideth in the wilderness of maon and saul heareth and pursueth after david to the wilderness of maon and saul goeth on this side of the mountain and david and his men on that side of the mountain and david is hastened to go from the face of saul and saul and his men are compassing david and his men to catch them and a messenger hath come in unto saul saying haste and come for the philistines have pushed against the land and saul turneth back from pursuing after david and goeth to meet the philistines therefore they have called that place the rock of divisions and david goeth up thence and abideth in fortresses at en gedi chapter twenty four and it cometh to pass when saul hath turned back from after the philistines that they declare to him saying lo david is in the wilderness of en gedi and saul taketh three thousand chosen men out of all israel and goeth to seek david and his men on the front of the rocks of the wild goats and he cometh in unto folds of the flock on the way and there is a cave and saul goeth in to cover his feet and david and his men in the sides of the cave are abiding and the men of david say unto him lo the day of which jehovah said unto thee lo i am giving thine enemy into thy hand and thou hast done to him as it is good in thine eyes and david riseth and cutteth off the skirt of the upper robe which is on saul gently and it cometh to pass afterwards that the heart of david smiteth him because that he hath cut off the skirt which is on saul and he saith to his men far be it from me by jehovah i do not do this thing to my lord to the anointed of jehovah to put forth my hand against him for the anointed of jehovah he is and david subdueth his men by words and hath not permitted them to rise against saul 
and Saul hath risen from the cave, and goeth on the way. And David riseth afterwards, and goeth out from the cave, and calleth after Saul, saying, My lord, O king! And Saul looketh attentively behind him, and David boweth face to the earth, and doth obeisance. And David saith to Saul, Why dost thou hear the words of man, saying, Lo, David is seeking thine evil? Lo, this day have thine eyes seen how that Jehovah hath given thee to-day into my hand in the cave. And one said to slay thee, and mine eye hath pity on thee, and I say, I do not put forth my hand against my Lord, for the anointed of Jehovah he is. And my father, see, yea, the skirt of thine upper robe in my hand, for my cutting off the skirt of thy upper robe, and I have not slain thee. Know and see that there is not in my hand evil and transgression, and I have not sinned against thee, and thou art hunting my soul to take it. Jehovah doth judge between me and thee, and Jehovah hath avenged me of thee, and my hand is not on thee. As saith the simile of the ancients, From the wicked goeth out wickedness, and my hand is not on thee. After whom hath the king of Israel come out? After whom art thou pursuing? After a dead dog, after one flea. And Jehovah hath been for judge, and hath judged between me and thee. Yea, he seeth and pleadeth my cause, and doth deliver me out of thy hand. And it cometh to pass, when David completeth to speak these words unto Saul, that Saul saith, is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifteth up his voice, and weepeth. And he saith unto David, More righteous thou art than I, for thou hast done me good, and I have done thee evil. And thou hast declared to-day how that thou hast done good with me, how that Jehovah shut me up into thy hand, and thou didst not slay me and that a man doth find his enemy and hath sent him away in a good manner and jehovah doth repay thee good for that which thou didst to me this day and now lo i have known that thou dost certainly reign and the kingdom of israel hath stood in thy hand and now swear to me by jehovah thou dost not cut off my seed after me nor dost thou destroy my name from the house of my father and David sweareth to Saul, and Saul goeth unto his house, and David and his men have gone up unto the fortress. Chapter 25 And Samuel dieth, and all Israel are gathered, and mourn for him, and bury him in his house, in Ramah. And David riseth, and goeth down unto the wilderness of Paran. And there is a man in Maon, and his work is in Carmel. And the man is very great, and he hath three thousand sheep, and a thousand goats, and he is shearing his flock in Carmel. And the name of the man is Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail. And the woman is of good understanding, and of fair form. And the man is hard and evil in doings, and he is a Calabite. And David heareth in the wilderness that Nabal is shearing his flock, and David sendeth ten young men, and David saith to the young men, Go ye up to Carmel, and ye have come in unto Nabal, and asked of him in my name of welfare, and said thus, To life, and thou peace, and thy house peace, and all that thou hast peace. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now the shepherds whom thou hast have been with us, we have not put them to shame, nor hath anything been looked after by them all the days of their being in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they declare to thee, and the young men find grace in thine eyes, for on a good day we have come. Give, I pray thee, that which thy hand findeth to thy servants, and to thy son, to David. And the young men of David come in, and speak unto Nabal according to all these words, in the name of David, and rest. And Nabal answereth the servants of David, and saith, Who is David, and who the son of Jesse? Today have servants been multiplied who are breaking away each from his master. And I have taken my bread, and my water, and my flesh, which I slaughtered for my shearers, and have given it to men whom I have not known whence they are. 
and the young men of david turn on their way and turn back and come in and declare to him according to all these words and david saith to his men gird ye on each his sword and they gird on each his sword and david also girdeth on his sword and there go up after david about four hundred men and two hundred have remained by the vessels and to abigail wife of nabal hath one young man of the youths declared saying lo david hath sent messengers out of the wilderness to bless our lord and he flieth upon them and the men are very good to us and have not put us to shame and we have not looked after anything all the days we have gone up and down with them in our being in the field a wall they have been unto us both by night and by day all the days of our being with them feeding the flock and now know and consider what thou dost for evil hath been determined against our lord and against all his house and he is too much a son of worthlessness to be spoken to and abigail hasteth and taketh two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep prepared and five measures of roasted corn and a hundred bunches of raisins and two hundred bunches of figs and setteth them on the asses and she saith to her young men pass over before me lo after you i am coming and to her husband nabal she hath not declared it and it hath come to pass she is riding on the ass and is coming down in the secret part of the hill country and lo david and his men are coming down to meet her and she meeteth them and david said only in vain i have kept all that this one hath in the wilderness and nothing hath been looked after of all that he hath and he turneth back to me evil for good thus doth god do to the enemies of david and thus he doth add if i leave up all that he hath till the light of the morning of those sitting on the wall and abigail seeth david and hasteth and cometh down from off the ass and falleth before david on her face and boweth herself to the earth and falleth at his feet and saith on me my lord the iniquity and let i pray thee thy handmaid speak in thine ear and hear the words of thy handmaid let not i pray thee my lord set his heart to this man of worthlessness on nabal for as his name is so is he nabal is his name and folly is with him and i thine handmaid did not see the young men of my lord whom thou didst send and now my lord jehovah liveth and thy soul liveth in that jehovah hath withheld thee from coming in with blood and to save thy hand to thee now let thine enemies be as nabal even though seeking evil unto my lord and now this blessing which thy maid servant hath brought to my lord it hath been given to the young men who are going up and down at the feet of my lord bear i pray thee with the transgression of thy handmaid for jehovah doth certainly make to my lord a steadfast house for the battles of jehovah hath my lord fought and evil is not found in thee all thy days and man riseth to pursue thee and to seek thy soul and the soul of my lord hath been bound in the bundle of life with jehovah thy god as to the soul of thine enemies he doth sling them out in the midst of the hollow of the sling and it hath been when jehovah doth to my lord according to all the good which he hath spoken concerning thee and appointed thee for leader over israel that this is not to thee for a stumbling block and for an offence of heart to my lord either to shed blood for naught or my lord's restraining himself and jehovah hath done good to my lord and thou hast remembered thy handmaid and david saith to abigail blessed is jehovah god of israel who hath sent thee this day to meet me and blessed is thy discretion and blessed art thou in that thou hast restrained me this day from coming in with blood and to restrain my hand to myself and yet jehovah liveth god of israel who hath kept me back from doing evil with thee for unless thou hadst hasted and dost come to meet me surely there had not been left to nabal till the light of the morning of those sitting on the wall and david receiveth from her hand that which he hath brought to him and to her he hath said go up in peace to thy house 
see i have hearkened to thy voice and accept thy face and abigail cometh in unto nabal and lo he hath a banquet in his house like a banquet of the king and the heart of nabal is glad within him and he is drunk unto excess and she hath not declared to him anything less or more till the light of the morning and it cometh to pass in the morning when the wine is gone out from nabal that his wife declareth to him these things and his heart dieth within him and he hath been as a stone and it cometh to pass in about ten days that jehovah smiteth nabal and he dieth and david heareth that nabal is dead and saith blessed is jehovah who hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of nabal and his servant hath kept back from evil and the wickedness of nabal hath jehovah turned back on his own head and david sendeth and speaketh with abigail to take her to him for a wife and the servants of david come in unto abigail at carmel and speak unto her saying david hath sent us unto thee to take thee to him for a wife and she riseth and boweth herself face to the earth and saith lo thy handmaid is for a maid-servant to wash the feet of the servants of my lord and abigail hasteth and riseth and rideth on the ass and five of her young women who are going at her feet and she goeth after the messengers of david and is to him for a wife and ahinoam hath david taken from jezreel and they are even both of them to him for wives and saul gave michal his daughter wife to david to faltai son of laish who was of galim the end of chapters twenty one through twenty five recording by mark penfold chapters twenty six through thirty one of the first book of samuel from the young's literal translation translated by robert young this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by mark penfold chapter twenty six and the ziphites come in unto saul at gibeah saying is not david hiding himself in the height of hakila on the front of the desert and Saul riseth, and goeth down unto the wilderness of Ziph, and with him three thousand men, chosen ones of Israel, to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul encampeth in the height of Hakilah, which is on the front of the desert, by the way, and David is abiding in the wilderness, and he seeth that Saul hath come after him into the wilderness. And David sendeth spies, and knoweth that Saul hath come unto Nacon, and david riseth and cometh in unto the place where saul hath encamped and david seeth the place where saul hath lain and abner son of ner head of his host and saul is lying in the path and the people are encamping round about him and david answereth and saith unto ahimelech the hittite and unto abishai son of zeruiah brother of joab saying who doth go down with me unto saul unto the camp and abishai saith i i go down with thee and david cometh and abishai unto the people by night and lo saul is lying sleeping in the path and his spear struck into the earth at his pillow and abner and the people are lying round about him and abishai saith unto david god hath shut up to-day thine enemy into thy hand and now let me smite him i pray thee with a spear even into the earth at once and i do repeat it to him and david saith unto abishai destroy him not for who hath put forth his hand against the anointed of jehovah and been acquitted and david saith jehovah liveth except jehovah doth smite him or his day come that he hath died or into battle he go down and hath been consumed far be it from me by jehovah from putting forth my hand against the anointed of jehovah and now take i pray thee the spear which is at his pillow and the cruse of water and we go away and david taketh the spear and the cruse of water at the pillow of saul and they go away and there is none seeing and there is none knowing and there is none awaking for all of them are sleeping for a deep sleep from jehovah hath fallen upon them 
and david passeth over to the other side and standeth on the top of the hill afar off great is the place between them and david calleth unto the people and unto abner son of ner saying dost thou not answer abner and abner answereth and saith who art thou who hast called unto the king and david saith unto abner art not thou a man and who is like thee in israel but why hast thou not watched over thy lord the king for one of the people had come in to destroy the king thy lord not good is this thing which thou hast done jehovah liveth but ye are sons of death in that ye have not watched over your lord over the anointed of jehovah and now see where the king's spear is and the cruise of water which is at his bolster and saul discerneth the voice of david and saith is this thy voice my son david and david saith my voice my lord o king and he saith why is this my lord is pursuing after his servant for what have i done and what is in my hand evil and now let i pray thee my lord the king hear the words of his servant if jehovah hath moved thee against me let him accept a present and if the sons of men cursed are they before jehovah for they have cast me out to-day from being admitted into the inheritance of jehovah saying go serve other gods and now let not my blood fall to the earth over against the face of jehovah for the king of israel hath come out to seek one flea as one pursueth the partridge in mountains and saul saith i have sinned turn back my son david for i do evil to thee no more because that my soul hath been precious in thine eyes this day lo i have acted foolishly and do err very greatly and david answereth and saith lo the king's spear and let one of the young men pass over and receive it and jehovah doth turn back to each his righteousness and his faithfulness in that jehovah hath given thee to-day into my hand and i have not been willing to put forth my hand against the anointed of jehovah and lo as thy soul hath been great this day in mine eyes so is my soul great in the eyes of jehovah and he doth deliver me out of all distress and saul saith unto david blessed art thou my son david also working thou dost work and also prevailing thou dost prevail and david goeth on his way and saul hath turned back to his place chapter twenty seven and david saith unto his heart now am i consumed one day by the hand of saul there is nothing for me better than that i diligently escape unto the land of the philistines and saul hath been despairing of me of seeking me any more in all the border of israel and i have escaped out of his hand and david riseth and passeth over he and six hundred men who are with him unto achish son of maach king of gath and david dwelleth with achish in gath he and his men each one with his household even david and his two wives ahinoam the jezreelitess and abigail wife of nabal the carmelitess and it is declared to saul that david hath fled to gath and he hath not added any more to seek him and david saith unto achish if i pray thee i have found grace in thine eyes then give to me a place in one of the cities of the field and i dwell there yea why doth thy servant dwell in the royal city with thee and achish giveth to him in that day ziklag therefore hath ziklag been to the kings of judah till this day and the number of the days which david hath dwelt in the field of the philistines is days and four months and david goeth up and his men and they push unto the geshurite and the gerizite and the amalekite for they are inhabitants of the land from of old as thou comest into shur and unto the land of egypt and david hath smitten the land and doth not keep alive man and woman and hath taken sheep and oxen and asses and camels and garments and turneth back and cometh in unto achish and achish saith whither have ye pushed to-day and david saith against the south of judah and against the south of the jeremielite 
and unto the south of the Kenite. Neither man nor woman doth David keep alive to bring in word to Gath, saying, Lest they declare it against us, saying, Thus hath David done, and thus is his custom all the days that he hath dwelt in the fields of the Philistines. And Achish believeth in David, saying, He hath made himself utterly abhorred among his people in Israel, and hath been to me for a servant age during. Chapter 28 And it cometh to pass in those days that the Philistines gather their camps for the war to fight against Israel. And Achish saith unto David, Thou dost certainly know that with me thou dost go out into the camp, thou and thy men. And David saith unto Achish, Therefore thou dost know that which thy servant dost do. And Achish saith unto David, Therefore, keeper of my head, I do appoint thee all the days. And Samuel hath died, and all Israel mourn for him, and bury him in Ramah, even in his city. And Saul hath turned aside those having familiar spirits, and the wizards, out of the land. And the Philistines are gathered, and come in, and encamp in Shunem, and Saul gathereth all Israel, and they encamp in Gilboa, and Saul seeth the camp of the Philistines, and feareth, and his heart trembleth greatly. And Saul asketh at Jehovah, and Jehovah hath not answered him, either by dreams, or by Urim, or by prophets. And Saul saith to his servants, Seek for me a woman possessing a familiar spirit, and I go unto her and inquire of her. And his servants say unto him, Lo, a woman possessing a familiar spirit in Endor. And Saul disguiseth himself, and putteth on other garments, and goeth, he and two of the men with him, and they come in unto the woman by night. And he saith, Divine, I pray thee, to me by the familiar spirit, and cause to come up to me him whom I say unto thee. And the woman saith unto him, Lo, thou hast known that which Saul hath done, that he hath cut off those having familiar spirits, and the wizards out of the land. And why art thou laying a snare for my soul, to put me to death? And Saul sweareth to her by Jehovah, saying, Jehovah liveth, punishment doth not meet thee for this thing. And the woman saith, Whom do I bring up to thee? And he saith, Samuel, bring up to me. And the woman seeth Samuel, and crieth with a loud voice, and the woman speaketh unto Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me, and thou Saul? And the king saith to her, Do not fear, for what hast thou seen? And the woman saith unto Saul, Gods I have seen coming up out of the earth. And he saith to her, What is his form? And she saith, An aged man is coming up, and he is covered with an upper robe. And Saul knoweth that he is Samuel, and boweth face to the earth, and doth obeisance. And Samuel saith unto Saul, Why hast thou troubled me to bring me up? And Saul saith, I have great distress, and the Philistines are fighting against me. God hath turned aside from me, and hath not answered me any more, either by the hand of the prophets, or by dreams, and I call for thee to let me know what I do. And Samuel saith, And why dost thou ask me? And Jehovah hath turned aside from thee, and is thine enemy. And Jehovah doth for himself as he hath spoken by my hand, and Jehovah rendeth the kingdom out of thy hand, and giveth it to thy neighbor to David, because thou hast not hearkened to the voice of Jehovah, nor didst the fierceness of his anger on Amalek. Therefore this thing hath Jehovah done to thee this day. Yea, Jehovah giveth unto Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and to-morrow thou and thy sons are with me. Also the camp of Israel doth Jehovah give into the hand of the Philistines. And Saul hasteth and falleth the fullness of his stature to the earth, and feareth greatly because of the words of Samuel. Also power was not in him, for he had not eaten bread all the day and all the night. 
and the woman cometh in unto saul and seeth that he hath been greatly troubled and saith unto him lo thy maidservant hath hearkened to thy voice and i put my soul in my hand and i obey thy words which thou hast spoken unto me and now hearken i pray thee also thou to the voice of thy maidservant and i set before thee a morsel of bread and eat and there is in thee power when thou goest in the way and he refuseth and saith i do not eat and his servants urge on him and also the woman and he hearkeneth to their voice and riseth from the earth and sitteth on the bed and the woman hath a calf of the stall in the house and she hasteth and slaughtereth it and taketh flour and kneadeth and baketh it unleavened things and bringeth nigh before saul and before his servants and they eat and rise and go on during that night chapter twenty nine and the philistines gather all their camps to aphek and the israelites are encamping at a fountain which is in jezreel and the princes of the philistines are passing on by hundreds and by thousands and david and his men are passing on in the rear with achish and the heads of the philistines say what are these hebrews and achish saith unto the heads of the philistines is not this david servant of saul king of israel who hath been with me these days or these years and i have not found in him anything wrong from the day of his falling away till this day and the heads of the philistines are wroth against him and the heads of the philistines say to him send back the man and he doth turn back unto his place whither thou hast appointed him and doth not go down with us into battle and is not to us for an adversary in battle and wherewith doth this one reconcile himself unto his lord is it not with the heads of those men is this not david of whom they answer in choruses saying saul hath smitten among his thousands and david among his myriads and achish calleth unto david and saith unto him jehovah liveth surely thou art upright and good in mine eyes is thy going out and thy coming in with me in the camp for i have not found in thee evil from the day of thy coming in unto me till this day and in the eyes of the princes thou art not good and now turn back and go in peace and thou dost do no evil in the eyes of the princes of the philistines and david saith unto achish ah, but what have i done and what hast thou found in thy servant from the day that i have been before thee till this day that i go not in and have fought against the enemies of my lord the king and achish answereth and saith unto david i have known that thou art good in mine eyes as a messenger of god only the princes of the philistines have said he doth not go up with us into battle and now rise thou early in the morning and the servants of thy lord who have come with thee when ye have risen early in the morning and have light then go ye and david riseth early he and his men to go in the morning to turn back unto the land of the philistines and the philistines have gone up to jezreel chapter thirty and it cometh to pass in the coming in of david and his men to ziklag on the third day that the amalekites have pushed unto the south and unto ziklag and smite ziklag and burn it with fire and they take captive the women who are in it from small unto great they have not put any one to death and they lead away and go on their way and david cometh in and his men unto the city and lo burnt with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters have been taken captive and david lifteth up and the people who are with him their voice and weep till that they have no power to weep and the two wives of david have been taken captive ahinoam the jezreelitess and abigail wife of nabal the carmelite and david hath great distress for the people have said to stone him for the soul of all the people hath been bitter each for his sons and for his daughters and david doth strengthen himself in jehovah his god and david saith unto abiathar the priest son of ahimelech bring nigh i pray thee to me the ephod 
and abiathar bringeth nigh the ephod unto david and david asketh at jehovah saying i pursue after this troop do i overtake it and he saith to him pursue for thou dost certainly overtake and dost certainly deliver and david goeth on he and six hundred men who are with him and they come in unto the brook of besor and those left have stood still and david pursueth he and four hundred men and two hundred men stand still who have been too faint to pass over the brook of besor and they find a man an egyptian in the field and take him unto david and give to him bread and he eateth and they cause him to drink water and give to him a piece of a bunch of dried figs and two bunches of raisins and he eateth and his spirit returneth unto him for he hath not eaten bread nor drunk water three days and three nights and david saith to him whose art thou and whence art thou and he saith an egyptian youth i am servant to a man an amalekite and my lord forsaketh me for i have been sick three days we pushed to the south of the kerithite and against that which is to judah and against the south of caleb and ziklag we burnt with fire and david saith unto him dost thou bring me down unto this troop and he saith swear to me by god thou dost not put me to death nor dost thou shut me up into the hand of my lord and i bring thee down unto this troop and he bringeth him down and lo they are spread out over the face of all the earth eating and drinking and feasting with all the great spoil which they have taken out of the land of the philistines and out of the land of judah and david smiteth them from the twilight even unto the evening of the morrow and there hath not escaped of them a man except four hundred young men who have ridden on the camels and are fled and david delivereth all that the amalekites have taken also his two wives hath david delivered and there hath not lacked to them anything from small unto great and unto sons and daughters and from the spoil even unto all that they had taken to themselves the whole hath david brought back and david taketh the whole of the flock and of the herd they have led on before these cattle and they say this is david's spoil and david cometh in unto the two hundred men who were too faint to go after david and whom they caused to abide at the brook of besor and they go out to meet david and to meet the people who are with him and david approacheth the people and asketh of them of welfare and every bad and worthless man of the men who have gone with david answereth yea they say because that they have not gone with us we do not give to them of the spoil which we have delivered except each his wife and his children and they lead away and go and david saith ye do not do so my brethren with that which jehovah hath given to us and he doth preserve us and doth give the troop which cometh against us into our hand and who doth hearken to you in this thing for as the portion of him who was brought down into battle so also is the portion of him who is abiding by the vessels alike they share and it cometh to pass from that day and forward that he appointeth it for a statute and for an ordinance for israel unto this day and david cometh in unto ziklag and sendeth of the spoil to the elders of judah to his friends saying lo for you a blessing of the spoil of the enemies of jehovah to those in bethel and to those in south ramoth and to those in jatir and to those in aroer and to those in sifmoth and to those in eshtemoa and to those in rachal and to those in the cities of the jaramealites and to those in the cities of the kenites and to those in horma and to those in korashan and to those in afak and to those in hebron and to all the places where david had gone up and down he and his men chapter thirty one and the philistines are fighting against israel and the men of israel flee from the face of the philistines and fall wounded in mount gilboa and the philistines follow saul and his sons and the philistines smite jonathan and abinadab 
and Malkishua, sons of Saul. And the battle is hard against Saul, and the archers find him, men with bow, and he is pained greatly by the archers. And Saul saith to the bearer of his weapons, Draw thy sword, and pierce me with it, lest they come, these uncircumcised, and have pierced me, and rolled themselves on me. And the bearer of his weapons hath not been willing, for he is greatly afraid. And Saul taketh the sword, and falleth upon it. And the bearer of his weapons seeth that Saul is dead, and he falleth, he also, on his sword, and dieth with him. And Saul dieth, and three of his sons, and the bearer of his weapons, also all his men, on that day together. And they see, the men of Israel who are beyond the valley, and who are beyond the Jordan, that the men of Israel have fled, and that Saul and his sons have died. And they forsake the cities, and flee, and Philistines come in and dwell in them. And it cometh to pass on the morrow, that the Philistines come to strip the wounded, and they find Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa, and they cut off his head, and strip off his weapons, and send into the land of the Philistines round about, to proclaim tidings in the house of their idols, and among the people. And they place his weapons in the house of Ashtaroth, and his body they have fixed on the wall of Beth Shan. And they hear regarding it, the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead, that which the Philistines have done to Saul. And all the men of valor arise, and go all the night, and take the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Beth Shan, and come in to Jabesh, and burn them there. And they take their bones, and bury them under the tamarisk in Jabesh, and fast seven days. The End of the First Book of Samuel from the Young's Literal Translation of the Bible Translated by Robert Young Recording by Mark Penfold